Thank you. Sure. So, so I'm David Seth. I'm a venture capitalist based in New York. This is what I do on the weekends, but that's not what we're talking about today. What is that? That's a human flag. So it's something fun to do in the park. Uh, so, so we're going to talk about origination using technology. It's a topic I've been tracking and interested in for a long time. And it started when I moved to New York in 2001 as a single guy. And I registered and bunch of online dating sites. I met a young lady in six months. We got married nine months later. And I thought, any technology that can find me a wife is a killer app. <laughs> so in romance, most of us want one partner and we're done. But in business, we want a lot of partners. And I realized that online dating, which used to be easy and embarrassing around the time I did it, but has gone mainstream, is now used by 90% of single Americans, that same technology could be used in business to find partners quickly and more efficiently. And it's revolutionary in the same way that online dating became so successful, because the more efficient way to find the right lender, the right investment target, the sort of business partners you want to collaborate with. So I use these tools as a VC. I've, used the, I've consulted to a variety of private equity funds on these topics. I'm now launching a new fund, and this is part of the secret sauce of the fund. So I'm going to share some ideas that I hope are actionable for you. Uh, no need to take notes, send a text to your parents and say hi, and you can download the whole deck at that link, kevin.com.com. So first, how hard is origination? I published a research paper on this a number of years ago. You need, on average, to find 80 companies to invest in one. In my prior VC fund, we looked at 250 companies in order to invest in one. So you need a really, really big funnel to be effective in this business. So I'm going to share with you the most amazing statistic I've ever found in the investment research. This is data from a research study on mutual funds, which found if you invest in a company run by someone you went to college with, doesn't matter Ivy League, non Ivy League, just the same college, same era, you get on average 840 basis points higher returns. Right? That's a ludicrous differential. If I could consistently promise LPs piece that sort of differential, I would be running a very large fund. Uh, if that is true, in the public markets, right, very transparent, very liquid, very regulated, all the more so is it true in the private markets. So what's driving this crazy results is because you have better data about people in your social network. You can track why are they raising capital, why are they selling, why are they buying, and you're more likely to make good investment decisions. So given this fact, how are private equity funds sourcing? The answer, as you heard from some of our prior speakers, is overwhelmingly personal relationships, but overwhelmingly without using much technology. So we're going to talk about how you can use technology to do this more effectively. So one way you use technology is by making the right investments come to you, the ones that fit your thesis. Right? Like for our prior speaker who focused on women sponsors, women that sponsors, right? You want those people to know you exist and know this is a niche you're targeting. So how good are private equity funds at Keon Coms? The answer is terrible, right? Survey says that no journals say P funds are good at this. It's not area of focus. I will contrast this with venture capital, Andreessen Horowitz, a relatively young firm. Their very first hire as a partner was a woman who ran the biggest PR firm in Silicon Valley. They realized that it's become a differentiator to have a clearly demarcated brand and to own that identity. So another, uh, another strategy that people are using is expert networks. Uh, the, the three main ways you can tap expert networks, and these to be CEO ones, have a particular affinity for this model. Uh, one is to boil the ocean, interview a lot of experts in the vertical that you're focused on. Uh, another is to focus on the rainmakers, the people in the industry nodes, the people who run the trade associations, and ask them for ideas. And the third is to learn themes, right? So what's going on? What might drive transaction value in your space? And I think that spending $500, $1,000 for some interviews with a couple of domain experts in your vertical interests can be a very quick way to identify companies that are going to do a transaction in the near future. So another, uh, another model is using uh, social media. So I think social media is relevant throughout the process. I will highlight that in today's super brief talk on focus on origination, but you can also use social media for helping companies post investment. We talked earlier about recruiting uh, and negotiating with companies in order to understand more about the person you're negotiating with in a variety of other ways, but we'll talk about it offline. So I'm going to share a few case studies. Let's talk about MCM Capital, microcap fund in, in Ohio. So a few years ago, the Howard Young associate who said, I'm all in on social media. I think we can use this to differentiate. We're focused on Midwest industrial companies, not necessarily so tech savvy, but we're going to do this. 
So they started investing some energy in it, and they had market results, both in origination, where they got increased yield flow, also from LPs. They got two inbound increase from LPs, compared with a baseline of zero inbound increase from LPs. Uh, and they continue to invest a few hours a week collectively across the firm, because they believe that that, and they have seen that that gets them better results. <laughs> Um, so, another pattern I'll highlight is the best investments typically show signals that mark them as potential investments. One of the great challenges in private equity is you don't know if the company has any interest in talking to you. In VC, we just assume they're running out of cash in the next 12 months. They don't raise money, so we don't have this problem, but you do. So, there are a variety of signals you can notice using a variety of tools that will tell you, yes, this company is raising the near future or needs to. So from the CEO, the three Ds, death, disease, divorce. Right? Two of those are publicly visible, death and divorce, disease portion of a bus sale. So you can track CEOs in the industry if there is news about a passing in the family or some sort of divorce situation, which of course is unfortunate, but may also indicate a need for cash and a greater receptivity to getting liquid. And also look at signals from the company itself. On LinkedIn, you see they're increasing headcount. That's a good sign. You see they're recruiting aggressively. That's a good sign. I think a really good sign is tracking the top executive talent in your industry and their job changes on LinkedIn. Senior executives don't change jobs without doing some real DE. They have an intimacy with the company because they work there every day in a way that you probably do not have. And so you can free and ride on their DE by tracking their job changes and saying, huh, that's something that really shows a good track record, they can train in the right firms. If they are considered joining this firm, maybe I should join this firm as an investor. Another signal is from the major equity owner. Private equity funds that are getting long in their, in their cycle and need to exit, right? The problem with P funds is they are a little sophisticated, right? So maybe a less attractive negotiating opponent, but nonetheless, that's part of the business. So it's good to know that they're late in their fund cycle and they really could use an exit, especially if they're having challenges in raising that next fund. Another set of signals are from the broader industry, either the local industry or the broader one. So typical small town America, right? Visualize it. In the Midwest, there are four significant companies in that town, which are the major players, right? They support all the local baseball teams and whatnot. One of them has an exit. What do you think happens to the other three CEOs? Right? They're all friendly with one another. They all go golfing together and have dinner together. And one guy's saying, yeah, the fund treated me well, hopefully, and uh, I'm enjoying some free time, I'm spending time with the grandkids. That is going to prompt the other guys to think a little more seriously about the possibility of considering an exit. So that's another marker, knowing what sales have happened in a given microgeography in the recent past. That might justify you spending a little more calories on flying out there and getting to know the people in that geo. So another set of tools are the biography and analysis software platforms. LinkedIn everyone knows, but there are others that are more special purpose. For, for example, relationship science, which tracks the top 1% of America, the people who sit in corporate boards, sit in nonprofit boards, uh, where are they giving money, what are they involved with, so you can get the right path to a given influencer who has decision-making power over a potential <coughs> transaction. Also highlight tools that analyze corporate org charts. So these vendors give you insight into who runs m a at a large company, who you might want to target as a potential buyer, uh, or who within your ecosystem might have affinity with you. So you have a higher success rate when you reach out to people with whom you have some affinity. On my first slide, you remember that photo of the, the phone uh, booths, right? That's because cold calls are what we want to avoid. When you reach out to people who went to your college, right? Maybe they're from the same country you're from or speak your same language, your same mother tongue. Those all increase the likelihood that they will respond positively. I know one firm that does outsource sales development and they use different names of different ethnicities when they target different targets. Right, because people respond differently when they see a name that's outbound from the same ethnicity. Right? I'm not saying it's good or bad, this is the reality of sales, and we're all salespeople when we're in origination. So another tool people, I think, underuse are emails. So case study, Daniel Zamino, prominent French angel. He graduated from Stanford Business School, I'm sure some other folks here went to prominent schools, right? But another thing he did is he joined all the relevant email lists for grads of Stanford Business School who work in tech and are interested in angel investing. And he sent an email saying, I'm an active investor, and by the way, I'm an investor in a company that's looking to raise a round. Lawyers in the room might say, not good, and don't do that, get a solicitation, he did it. Uh, and that resulted in a significant infusion from a prominent investor in Silicon Valley into one of his portfolio companies. What I highlight there is not going to Stanford, which I recommend if you get in, but 
taking advantage of the online networks that all of the universities make available for their alums on LinkedIn, Google Groups, right, whatever groups are out there. So <clears throat> another <clears throat> tool is SEO, search engine optimization. Most firms have a website and there's some modest efforts to SEO it. I find most firms completely fail to SEO, search engine optimize, the individual profiles of the people who work in the firm. Everyone in your firm, right down interns, should have the same description in the top line of their bio and should be keyword rich. Right? Should highlight, for example, have words in it for industrials, pipe fittings, oil and gas, right? Whatever the right terms are for your particular strategy. Why? Because you want that everyone else out there in the ecosystem, when they search for P funds who are interested in oil and gas, even your intern shows up. Doesn't matter they're an intern. They are a representative of your firm, right? You want them to get the inbound email saying, oh, I have a transaction and I think it might be relevant to your firm. So another case study, Hamilton Robinson, little room in the market firm in Connecticut. One of the partners went to Darden and he put an ad on the Darden job board saying, we are looking to back CEOs and management buyouts. That ad got forwarded to someone who didn't go to Darden, who said, okay, yeah, I'm interested. I'm working for a 70-year-old and I'd like to have some cash to buy him out. And that's what happened. So I don't think job boards are frequently used placement strategy, but they're really cheap, and they get read by people who might be in a position to be helpful to. So another channel is figuring out the right media to connect with people. The academic research in this shows that the more channels you use and are available on and can engage with people on, the more comfortable people are with you. It's no different than if you're in France, right? If you speak French, you have an advantage. You're going to connect better with a local friend of France. So, uh, I was at a conference yesterday sponsored by Chinese Family Office. Everyone's using WeChat. If I didn't have WeChat and wasn't WeChat fluent, right, I would have been more of an outsider than I already was, but we'll set that aside. So, so I encourage you to register for the different communication channels that are normative in your industry and be bilingual. It's a heck of a lot easier to get comfortable on WeChat than it is to actually learn Chinese, which I haven't done. So another standard tool is CRM. And that sounds obvious, but I've published research in this, and most P-Funds don't have a CRM that is used firm-wide, it's not enriched, and it's not tagged with data about who's in it, and it also is not fully uh, uh, mandated across particularly the senior partners who often are a little technology first, depending on age. So I would make it absolutely mandatory, model it right as a, a partner of the firm, and tell the junior people if it's not tracked in the CRM, you're not compensated on it because we assume it didn't happen. And that's going to enhance the platform value. Uh, I would also <clears throat> I'll highlight online communities for, for executives. One of the patterns we see in online communities is more senior people want to gain themselves. They want to associate with people at their same level. And so there are a whole host of online communities, why like was an example of earlier, geared for different verticals. So for example, there's CERMO, which is focused on medicine, right, gated for people in that space. So I encourage you to look on LinkedIn and some of the other platforms I list, find the gated communities for your industry and get in it. And if it doesn't exist, go and make one of your own and own it. Because it's extremely cheap to run that community, much cheaper than running a conference every day for all the players in your space. So <clears throat> lastly, I want to highlight some of the gated communities for investors. There are a variety of companies that have emerged that want to be the meeting place to Facebook for, for investors. And I hope you will consider registering for some of these. So I will be here for the rest of the day. And look forward to talking to some of you offline. If you have tips, please share them with me. Thank you so much.